Warning system activated. Welcome to Area 2, Raquia, which has my favorite music in the entire game. The track for this level is called Night Flight, and it will stick with me forever. <laughs> Right here we have a bunch of Mirage enemies riding motorcycles and they can easily be destroyed on the motorcycles with our silhouette shot or knocked off their motorcycles if we shoot them enough with our Mirage shot. The motorcycles will hurt us regardless of what attribute we are currently because the motorcycles are normal type, not Mirage or Silhouette. You shall become the rust of my sword! So this fellow is named Nardo, and he is capable of using the crescent on his helmet as a boomerang or firing a shockwave out of his sword. Unfortunately, he is a piece of cake. We rather easily drained all of his spirit energy, and he's even easier to kill. But instead of taking the easy way out and quickly destroying him with our mirage shot, we're gonna smash him into the bridge and make a lot of noise. Nardo said the people here value nothing more than peace and quiet, so if they hear us being noisy, which of course Nardo is very noisy with that clanky armor, they'll start throwing stuff at us. With our triple jump, it's very easy for us to avoid the thrown objects, but it's not so easy for Nardo. Zohar, as we saw in a previous cutscene, can switch between two forms. There is Zohar Sandolphin, the one with the gun, and Zohar Metatron, the one with the sword. I personally think Zohar Metatron is much easier to fight. 
Zohar Sandolphin can fire in four directions, which is what she does most of the time during this initial fight. Zohar Metatron, on the other hand, is content to just rush at us and try and swing a sword at us. They have other moves, but they don't use them for their first battle, because they don't want to give away too much, you see. Also, I should mention I was incorrect back there. They are not two people, they are one person, and they are both he. There is no she. As you've seen, we can't deflect any of Metatron's attacks, but we can deflect Sandolphon's attacks rather easily. Sandolphon does have one other move he hasn't used yet. Yeah, there it is. That's a homing laser, but it only homes in once, and after the initial pass, it stops trying. Immediately after we board this train, we are almost immediately assaulted by more motorcycle mirages, and we don't have any lampposts we can triple jump onto this time, but staying on these platforms will get the job done. They can actually jump up onto those platforms with their motorcycles, but we can easily knock them off mid-jump. I assume this encounter is meant to be more difficult than the previous one, but if you're having trouble, just jumping between the two platforms they provide should do fine. After that rather underwhelming long jump, we encounter another walker. Now we could deflect its shots back at it, or we could knock it off the back of the train. This is a lot more difficult if you don't have a rapidly firing Sarosa, but you can also use your reflector to knock the walker off in that case. Still, it's much more fun than fighting it the normal way. This game does have a lot of cute details in it. Goliath here theoretically has a ton of devastating moves at his disposal, but unfortunately one of his moves is attempting to run through our bullets instead of jump over them. That would work if we had a less rapid firing weapon, but instead he just ran in place and got dead. This is the attribute gun, and there are living silhouette and mirage bullets that will try to get inside it. We want to shoot all the mirage bullets so that way we can deflect the silhouette ones. Reflector! It's actually a kind of neat strategy that makes you think slightly outside the box. 
You can memorize which order the bullets get into the chamber, of course, but why do that when you can just destroy the bullets you don't want before they get in? Now the attribute gun does fire a different kind of shot depending on which bullet gets inside, so you could easily memorize which kind of bullet gets inside and figure out which shot is about to come too. But again, you don't have to do that if you just get rid of the bullets you don't want. Reflector! It's kinda cute that they bothered to put those mechanics in place so that if you don't think outside the box like this, you could beat it like a normal person. But they still totally let you cheese it, which is what I which is what I love to do. Now that we have some time to talk, let's uh, let's mention Goliath's potential move set since we killed him so quickly. Goliath is capable of firing a muscle shot, which is just a projectile made from his sweat, I assume. Capable of leaping into the air and jumping down to create several shockwaves, which take up a huge area and are best jumped over. And he's also capable of grabbing you and throwing you into the ground, regardless of how much spirit power he has. The grab can stunlock you if you're not careful, and lastly, Goliath can jump into his cart in the background and throw silhouette and mirage enemies at you like projectiles, but this attack is incredibly ineffective. I have never seen a bullet not go in the chamber before. Welcome to a fight against Hell's first guardian angel, Dynamis. Dynamis is uh, the first fight I think the average person would have trouble with in this game. It's not a particularly difficult game. Her tentacles have three attacks you should worry about. They can grab you and hold you still in the air, they can smash you into the ground, or they can just shoot you. With our triple jump it is very easy to leap over them, thankfully. When Dynamis switches sides, she also switches attributes. All this really means is we need to pay more attention to which direction we're facing while we're shooting her, because shooting her with the same colored shot isn't going to do any good. After we deal enough damage, she will come up underneath us and try to damage us with her fins. Now she has two variations of this attack, and I was used to the other variation, which is why I kept getting hit here. This variation I've only seen a couple of times. Normally she, uh... She dives across the screen with her fins instead of coming up right under you. This is actually the first time I've seen this variation of the attack in years. That's the thing about the bosses in this game, they have a lot of attacks you're not even likely to see. For example, Dynamis can actually have two colors of tentacles on screen at the same time, but that's incredibly rare. All of her attacks are really easy to dodge, and when she grabs you, she does try to shoot you with her other tentacles, but you can just easily turn sides and they won't hurt you. So I think the fight would be a lot more hectic and interesting if she had both colors of tentacles on screen more often. But you know, like I said, you're not likely to even know she can do that. I've played the game countless times and I've only seen it happen like thrice. Oh, before I forget, you might have noticed if we shoot a tentacle and destroy it while it's on the ground, it leaves behind an eyeball, which will occasionally shoot at us, but it doesn't have very much health, so we can get rid of it very quickly. One last thing worth noting is that her voice clips are also a good way to tell when a certain attack is coming, but I wouldn't rely on that, because not all the bosses, uh... Not all the bosses give you that benefit. And her attacks are really easy to dodge anyway.
<laughs> Be careful. Remember, I'll run your trail now. <laughs>